Hello, we are live. Hi, Julia. Hi, Aya. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I just have had a lot of animal issues this evening. I don't know if there are raccoons or foxes on the oh, prowl on my property. Yeah. Uh, the ducks did not want to go to bed, and they waited to the very last minute to go to bed. So I'm going to take care of some things, but I'll leave you in charge for a while. And our topic tonight is very interesting. It's about investments in contemporary art. And I'll let you take over for a while. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So I can't really share, but I could just tell you one of the things I saw on the Masterworks website. This is a very interesting concept, being able to invest in art online and i'm like what is this like we saw a video about it but then i started looking a little bit more into it and on the masterworks website itself it says a complete platform for investing in art masterworks is the first platform for buying and selling art shares representing an investment in iconic artwork so in other words art is kind of like other bitcoin and other things that people invest in this is like basically a product that you can invest in. You're not going to own the art to hang on your wall, but the idea is you buy a share of it. Build a diversified portfolio of iconic works of art curated by industry leading research team. According to art price, the value of blue chip art has outpaced the S and P 500 by 180% from 2000 to 2018. We estimate based on the delight, report, Diliot report, the total value of privately held art to be 1.7 trillion. So it's quite a big market, the private art investment world. Um, so they just talk about who they are. And then they have a little synopsis here about um, we select the artists. Our research team uses um, our proprietary data to determine which artists markets have the most momentum. So they're, I guess they're doing some sort of researching to figure out like which art market is going to do well. We purchased the art. Our acquisition team locates what we believe is a good piece at a fair price and we purchase the work. We securitize the artwork. We file an offering circular with the Securities and Exchange Commission allowing anyone to invest. We hold the artwork to three to five, 10 years. Wait until we sell the painting to receive your prorated proceeds after our fees. Sell shares on a secondary market. You Or this is another option on their website. You have the option to seek to sell your shares on our secondary market. We cannot assure you that the secondary market will provide enough liquidity, a reliable or effective means for monetizing your investment or valuing your shares. Now, that's really interesting. So I'm not like an expert on this topic. Like this is just a new thing, a new insight that has came to me. Like, but I'm kind of curious about it. I'm, but I wasn't curious about it from the investors and point of view because I don't invest in anything. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no interest in invest, like maybe, maybe, but it's not something I do. What I was interested in it was from the artist perspective, but this was a weird thing. I started looking into how you could submit work to master arts. Like, do they have a criteria process? And it was funny. I found another gallery called Masterworks Fine Art, and I thought that was them at first, but it wasn't. But what I did find, I think, was a Forbes review about master works. So anyway, Masterworks is an alternative investing platform that sells fractional shares, like a small part of works of fine art. With no minimum investment requirement and accessible prices, Masterworks makes it relatively easy for investors to buy shares of contemporary artwork by famous artists like Banksy and jean michel Biscuit. Okay, so what, what bothers me about the Banksy thing is we're not supposed to even know who that Banksy is. Uh, do they know who he is? He, or he oh, or she? I or don't that? know who he is. He's a, he's a performance artist that's done graffiti, okay? Like, I, I know a little bit because there was a story in our local area 
back in 2010 about what he did and how he got off the hook for doing something that somebody else would have gotten in a lot of trouble for. Like, I don't know, like, however you feel about public land, but here's the thing. He went into Joshua Tree National Park and spray painted rocks, okay? And that's not okay. That's not okay to go into a well, park. Yeah, know. but do we know who he is? I mean, do we know his I mean, real I know name? he's a street, I don't know his real name. Um, I know he's a street artist. I know he's British and that's about all I really know about him. Well, yeah, right? but uh, okay. So Julia, I don't know much about it either, but I thought that his identity is not known. It has not been uncovered. Well, there was like he, he, I think he ended up paying a fine and Cal I'd have to look for the, it was a really old article from 2010. He did pay a fine, but let's just say he got off the hook for like doing graffiti. Like, much okay, more well, like this is news to me uh, because I would like to know what his real name is. So if he paid a fine, how did he do that? Oh, well, let me go back. You know, this was a while back. So, okay. Let's look. Banksy. Identity. Identity. Um, you know, yeah, that's what I know Banksy's identity, but I think it was in that article. That's why I'm looking for it. Banksy's real identity, because it was in Riverside County. So I could that would be a way to oh, here we go. Banksy's real name is Robin Cunningham, as first reported by the mail in Sunday, 2018, 2008. So oh. his real name is Robin Cunningham. Okay. Well, that's really weird. So let's look at the artwork. Uh, let's look at their article about Banksy. Okay, I can bring this up. This is something on um, Lad Bible, just talking about, or do you want the um, Daily let's, Mail? Let's, uh, yeah, you haven't put any information here yet. You haven't shared anything. So put your sh all the things you'd like to share over here, and we'll look at them. Okay, so... I, I have them all up as links, but when you mean share, like going to screen share, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. What I mean is just, just present them and I will, I will take them one by one. Okay. Okay. We'll do that. So I'll do that. I wasn't, I didn't even click on it cause you weren't here. That was why. Okay. Well, what so I said was put, put them in the bin and then I will uh, take them one by one. I can add it to the stream or I can wait until you have the other ones up and we'll decide which ones. Well, I have up. everything in a window where I can just click on the next one. Okay. Is what, a, what exactly, like I know how to do it with the video, but if you can tell me if I was supposed to do it differently, is there another way that I should be doing it? Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, See, I, I didn't know that that was going to be there. What was it? It was an HP thing. I just clicked out real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I can just continue. Do, 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 do. Okay. So what is Banksy's real name? Banksy never ceases to amaze people. What's his real name? Banksy's real name is thought to be Robert, Robin Cunningham. Okay, so what does that mean, thought to be? That's not the same thing as it is thought to be. Well, here's the thing. They can't say one. Like, I'm sure, like, it seems like there's enough evidence that's his real name. But, you know, it's going to be hard. Like, if he's so elusive, like, to pin it down, I mean, I'm... I would think for sure, like, that's a good lead. Like, okay, well, why is he thought to be Robin Cunningham? Uh, Cunningham? Well, the next paragraph says there has been a university study to identify the elusive Banksy in 2016. Researchers at Queen Mary University of London did some detective work and listed down Banksy's movements as measured by his artwork and Cunningham's no movements, and they found the two matched up. So you can give or take it. I was going to look for that article in Riverside County where he paid the fee. Because okay, I thought, yeah, sure. I, I'd love to do that. Is, I mean, I would have to do a little bit more searching for that, so I'd have to take everything out. But I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll, yeah I, I'll remove it. I'll remove yeah, yeah. it that, so that you I'll have privacy. Out of share I don't want to violate your privacy on your. Thing. So that's why 
we, we only want to look at the things that you want to show us. Okay. Yeah. See, the thing is, I don't ever have anything that, I don't know. It's, so I'll tell you what. Let's see. I'll, I'll do some more research. Why don't you tell me what you think about this whole Banksy thing while I'm looking? Okay. I, I'll admit I'm kind of ignorant. You know more about him than I do. Okay. So first things first, I don't really know much. I wasn't really interested in him um, or him, you know, I mean, assuming it's a him. Uh, so, but what I had heard about him was that he was unidentified, that we didn't know who he was, that it might be more than one person. It could be a whole group of people because we don't know, you know, there's no way to tell whether it's just one person or, you know, which uh, as long as this person is trying to be anonymous, other people can go in and do um, mock pieces that are in the same style. And then how would they know? Uh, so it might be a group of people is what you had heard? Well, it's not what I'd heard. It's what I thought. You know, okay. I haven't heard anything. I, honestly, I know less about it than you do. Um, you know a lot more than I do. So I'm not uh, setting myself as an uh, expert on Banksy. I was trying to figure out how these masterworks people thought they could make money off a street artist who has not identified himself. Do you see what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. So I, I wouldn't expect uh, someone like that who, um, you know, defaces public property and all of that to identify himself and say, hey, I want to uh, give me the million dollars that you just sold my painting for. Uh, so I don't understand any of this. It doesn't make any sense to me. But I think it's interesting. Let's see. Um, I'm just kind of looking for some articles. So it seems a little bit more elusive than I thought. Like they're talking about the vandalism. But now it's it sounds like when I'm reading this, it might have been another Banksy-inspired artist. So maybe it is a group of people. See, I don't want to be wrong, Aya. I just heard it was Banksy and they said it was Banksy. So maybe it is a group of people. That's yeah, weird. Banksy is not a real name, you know. It's just yeah. not. And and uh, I heard that stencils were being used to create some of that artwork. So that means, you know, whoever created the stencil could have made lots of copies, given it to lots of people to create some kind of, you know, um, revolutionary movement or something. Okay, so here it is, jerk artist um, deface Joshua Tree of art. I guess it was somebody in the Banksy movement, like he's a Banksy aficionado, and his name was Andre. So he's somebody. Okay. Yeah. So I see. I could have misspoke. Like I'm sorry. I had read, and they said yeah, Banksy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not that I know who it is. It's not like I can say no, Julia. Yeah. It's not that person. I don't know who it is, but I don't think anybody does. Or if somebody does. I, I don't think they can sell his work in a gallery. Do you see what my concern is? Yeah. Well, the thing that really made me mad about that, the facing the rock thing was like, they were just like, oh, you get off. And then a lot of people copycatted him. And this has been a problem, like not even in Joshua Tree Park, but just like people going out and spray painting big boulders. And that really bothers me. And it's getting worse and worse, like with social media, because they it's like, I was always taught you don't do that. And now people are just going out and they're just like painting like boulders. Like they think it's really beautiful. And I just don't think that's art. Like I think that's destroying nature. Like it really bothers me a lot. I understand. I, I'm i not part of that movement. Well, I know you're not, but that's what, like maybe it's not being, I don't know what part of, maybe it's just somebody that was inspired. Yeah, by Banksy. No, 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 I don't know who Banksy is and I don't know if it's one person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but if we could look at the Masterworks article about Banksy, and maybe if you could bring that up, I'll share it, okay? Yeah, let's do that. So we shall- You know, the first time I heard about Banksy, this, this is gonna show you how ignorant I am. It was, I was watching Switched at Birth at, at, with my daughter, and uh, one of the characters was imitating Banksy, okay? And she was a, a teenage girl. She was going around um, doing graffiti, so. Interesting. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and share this. Yeah, we have the um 
Masterworks Banksy Buying Guide. Um, from Bristol, the anonymous graffiti artist stencil works were first seen around the late 1990s. So, you know, it probably is a group of people because how could they? That's weird. Um, in Bristol, London, Banksy does a clever mix of popular and political imagery. I, I, I have such a tongue in cheek. I guess people like street art, people who like street art, they, they, just, oh, I don't know. These types of works have gained Banksy the attention or not just the public media, but also key players. So basically it's like guerrilla art. It's contemporary art. It seems like he does a little bit of everything. It's guerrilla art. Did you say that word, that term guerrilla art? Yeah, I don't like that. It's just very like, ugh. Uh, okay. So, okay. How can you invest in that? This is my question. How can anybody invest in that? You can't, but you know, I saw another art video about um, dissecting just a quick, and I don't know, you can give and take their opinion, but there was this video just saying how basically the art investors decide what we should invest in. And it's very, um, fixed because they're the ones making the decisions so it's like this group of people and they decide so that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good art or it's more valuable than like a i don't know some painter on the in paris in my opinion it's just oh, what i'm not talking about validity at all i yes. uh, right now <laughs> uh, let me explain what i'm trying to figure out okay i'm not yeah. trying to invest in art i wasn't thinking oh wow this is great investment scheme I want to know how it works. I want yeah. to understand both from the artist's perspective and the investor's perspective, what in the world is going on here? Is this NFT? Well, that's a good question. So with collecting with Banksy is an investment and begins with collecting Banksy. There are important questions. Why Banksy? How does decide which prize? Let's address the first question. Okay, it's not which prize, it's which piece. Now, what kind of pieces are we talking about? Because if he does street art, isn't that on public property? How can you buy that? Oh, uh, well, that's a good question. Do you take a photograph of it? Is it like, and he paints it or, you know? Well, that's what I'm asking. That's what I'd like to understand. Yeah, I don't, this is weird. Like to me, it's just, it's. it seems very, there were some reviews of Masterworks, by the way, and it was kind of mixed. Some people kind of liked it. Some people said it wasn't worth their investment. And I saw a few channels that were discussing this. So it seems to be a mixed bag, in my opinion. And they're so new still that they don't have the track record to say, is this a long-term strategy but that's not even what i'm asking i'm asking really simple questions i i'm not asking is this a good investment i'm asking what in the world are they doing what are they selling and how is the securities exchange commission involved with that well those are all good questions i i don't know i really don't know i'm just looking at this article and he's talking about different themes and what he pays. Oh, oh, okay, wait a minute. Go back up to that love in the bin. Love in the bin. Oh, God. Okay, so Girl with Balloon is one of the most instantly recognizable and sought after works. Iconic work has been so stenciled all over the world. The, uh, these are stencils that somebody made, but then other people are using, okay? It has become even more famous uh, thanks to Banksy's prank on the Sotheby's auction, where an original print of the girl with the balloon has a self-destructed and shredded half of the work, hence becoming love is in the bin. Okay, can you click on that link? Yeah, we can click on it. Okay, let's go down. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Well, does it? I guess it has some sort of deeper meaning to it. It seems kind of political and angry and. But okay, that's not even my question. I, it's a stencil. Okay, it was stenciled onto this building. Yeah. What are yeah. they selling? What are they selling an investment in? It's a joke. Like to me, like, I don't know, like maybe they're just causing like some sort of hoopla around their, their. No, no, no. Are, is it a print? Is it a photograph? Is What is it that they're selling? 
that's a good question. Are they selling part of the building? Um, I mean, I'm looking at this and it doesn't really say. Do you see in this article where it's saying specifically? Okay, wait a minute. The, the painting that went up for auction was Banksy's Girl with Balloon. Okay, is it was it a painting? Where was it located, this painting? Was it not on a wall? It was first on a wall and then... Huh. So what did they do? Did they cut it off the wall? You know, it doesn't say, though. I'm looking at the whole article. It doesn't say exactly, like, how they sold it. And they even say their business model is you don't really own, like, you can't put the painting that you're buying on the wall. You own a share of it. I feel like it's kind of a... I like so, to think about are they like are they legit? That's my question. Maybe they are. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. I just want to know, you know, as a lawyer, okay, yeah. not as an artist, as a lawyer, I and I want to know what they're selling. Okay. Okay. You see I, what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. I just I can't give you a definitive answer from looking at this article. It's it's just talking about his imagery style and how it was on London's West Bank wall stenciled and on and pedestrians would walk by and see it. And how can you sell that? You how can you sell that? Opinion, it's not sellable. That that doesn't even it's public, like unless it's a private building and you're selling the building with the wall, but they could paint over the wall. So that doesn't even make any like to me, it's a lot of like, performance art maybe it's the whole performance idea like you're selling the idea i well, don't know. I mean, julia uh first of all if if this person's identity is not known and oh. the the stencils have been given away to lots and lots and lots of people it's not even clear who owns the copyright to the image that, that's a good point so i'm just going to take us out of here because right now i would have to do more research to figure out you know what it is that Okay. Because uh, honestly, I just, I can't, I can't figure it out, Aya. Do you feel like you have a grasp of what they're selling? No, but I feel that it's kind of important to try to understand. Well, I'm going to have to look into it more yeah. because right now looking at their website, I don't think. I don't know if it's a joke. You know, I don't know if the whole thing is a joke, but. It, uh, could, it could be a great joke, but so is the whole investment art idea. A lot of it is a pyramid scheme. It is. It's okay. Like, do, you have, do you have another article that you want to share that doesn't have to do with Banksy and doesn't have to do with Masterworks about the investment uh, schemes involving uh, modern art? Well, I had the Forbes article. I had been reading it, but I think I closed it up. So I'll bring it back up. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah. Unless you had an article, was there anything that you saw that? You no, I see? actually, I did see that Banksy article. I didn't understand it. I thought maybe you could explain it to me. Uh, to be honest, no, I, I don't understand it. I'm sorry. But okay. maybe it's my problem. Like, maybe I'm just not wanting to understand yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, neither of us understand it. You don't understand it. I don't understand it. The only thing is that in your case, you're so, you know, against yeah. Banksy that you didn't really want to think. But I, I just want to understand. I'm not for Banksy. I'm pretty sure I don't agree with the politics of the Banksy group. None of that is, it's not like I'm identifying with it, but I do want to know what's going on. That's all. Okay, so here's the Forbes advisor. Masterworks is an alternative investing platform that sells fractional shares and works of art with no minimum investment requirement and accessible prices. But that's the thing. If you just buy one little share, it's not like you're going to get some large return on it. You're going to have well, to. Yeah. 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 That, I'm not. That's fine. If you, you know, if they said Julia Hanna's beautiful painting, you can own one, one half of 1% of it. Uh, yeah. I could understand that because you, Julia, would have to agree to sign over your rights uh, to the painting. And then it could be divided among a lot of investors and each one would get a small fraction of the return on investment when they sold your painting for a million dollars. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. But how can they sell 
Banksy's paintings, which are painted on public property, and Banksy is not a real person, and uh, it's all based on stencils, and we don't know who has the copyright to the stencil. We don't. And here's another thing that's interesting. Like, I guess they're going to go, maybe they'll break it down a little bit. They have some pros. Masterworks uh, makes it relatively easy to buy contemporary artists. Um, the platform offers good research. But my question is, who does the research and what is it based on? And support services. It features a well-designed, easy-to-use interface. If you're looking to diversify your portfolio by investing in artwork without spending a fortune, Masterwork offers a compelling option. So the pros are the platform provides good investment research on artworks and contemporary art market. That's one pro. One con is fine art is relatively high risk investment with no recurring income stream. Masterworks handles the entire process, finding, purchasing, and storing. It could take, and I read this on their website, three to 10 years for the company to sell an individual artwork, but how do they sell something that's a stencil on a wall? Even this yeah. isn't telling me. I don't know. How do you sell a stencil on the wall? It's kind of like the whole concept of selling thin air or the like little shyster guy that would sell the bridge. Like, like you can't buy the bridge. Is this like a high form of that? I don't know. Like selling a bridge to somebody who's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I could buy the I mean, I don't get it. Even this doesn't seem to be answering my questions, Aya. I don't know. You know? Right. Yeah, it doesn't answer the questions. I mean, I understand the basic concepts of investing. Of course, you, not, yeah, no, you, you know a lot about investing. That's why. Yeah, no, I mean, I wish Brian were still with that's us. That's what I was thinking, too. Like, I was just sitting there and I was thinking, what would Brian think about this? And I wish, like, I feel like Brian's here with us in spirit in a way. I'm like, I could imagine him saying something about it. Like, but I wish I know what he'd say about it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a good option for people who want an alternative investment in their fine art and to their portfolio, but would prefer to avoid costs, risk castles. I still don't really understand at the end of the day, like I'm going to have to keep digging. Why Banksy? Why the stencils? How? What are you selling? What are you buying? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I'm going to have to keep looking, Aya. Okay, okay. I. Yeah, it's not like I get it. I just have questions. I don't have answers. Um, I like things that are a little bit more concrete. I feel like this is some sort of pyramid scheme, but that's just me. Like I kind of feel okay. Like that okay. So there is, on the one hand, Banksy seems to be some sort of left wing uh, movement. Okay, <laughs> uh, and it's not really an art movement so much as a political movement, in my opinion. Uh huh. You know, they're they're uh, definitely on one side of the spectrum politically and not on the other. Uh, and then we're, this is supposed to be a business scheme that people who have a lot of money are going to invest in. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Well, I mean, they did sell Banksy's Mona Lisa for $1.5 million. How did they sell it? So that's what I want to understand. I saw that. I saw that. What does Banksy's Mona Lisa consist of? Is it a stencil? That's a that's a good question. So I have to go in and type that in. What does Banksy's Mona Lisa consist of? Great question. Um, the protagonist of Leonardo da Vinci's. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've heard of the Mona Lisa. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm just reading what it says that it's a protagonist. Like it's like supposed to be kind of mocking it in some way. What is the content? We'll see. Other stuff is coming up. That's not what I want. I want the Banksy one. Okay. So, well, here's something here. It just shows Banksy 1974 and is showing the Mona Lisa with a target on her forehead holding a machine gun because, of course, it's gorilla art. Like, yay. Like, it's just not. I yeah, guess. I, I get it. I get it. But where, how did they get something by Banksy? How That's did they a good question. 
And now that I'm reading this, it doesn't say like what it's painted out of. What is it created with? Like what medium? Like I'm looking for things that you would like you would know. Like it doesn't right. even in any artwork, you would know what it's painted on. You would know the medium. You would know the size of it, for instance. So here's um, the next question. Um and then it says at the end, despite the apparent lawlessness of his practice. Banksy preaches the utopian view of street art. What does that even mean? I'm sorry. I, I want to understand what that means, but what does that mean? <laughs> okay. Let's just assume that they want to topple society, that they want a revolution. That's what I assume. Yeah. Um, and let's say who's behind Banksy or Masterworks. Is it like the PRC? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that has occurred to me. Yeah. I mean, you go into, like, I don't know, like, you go into a national park and you do something to destroy, like, it kind of, it's to mess with people's heads. Like, even if you are a follower of Banksy, you just want to mess with people because a lot of people are very upset, like me, and have visceral opinions about people that deface, like, um, nature. We don't like that. That bothers me a little bit, you know? Yeah, I, I think know. it's the kind of mess with people. I just... I don't know who they are, but I don't have very good feelings about them. <laughs> yeah, that, that goes without saying. We're on the same side, okay? I just want to yeah. understand. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I will keep looking, but even that, that one snippet, it doesn't tell me, is it stencil? Is it on a canvas? Was it created, like, with oil paint? It just has a picture of it, and it's saying that it's worth, like, so many millions of dollars. So is it like a photograph of, it, of it graffiti art? It doesn't really say. It just talks about, it says the details and it talks about his street art. It so, says it's worth like in British pounds, like 731,000, but it's sold for 19 million, which makes no sense. Like it's just throwing numbers <laughs> around. You know what? I don't even understand it. It's just, it's on the Christie's website. It's, it's a lot. Like I could share this, but it doesn't make any sense. It's just because it's not saying what it is. I mean, do you want me to share? It? Yes, please. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. here we go. Maybe I wasn't looking close enough. Stenciled with the artist named Banksy spray paint stencil. Okay. On, on board. I so it's actually a stencil that you could make your own Banksy art with. Yeah, I'll, I'll share it so we can see it. See, I wasn't okay. trying. I'm sorry. I have these visceral reactions to Banksy, everyone. I just don't like the whole thought. But you know what? If you like it, more power to you. There we go. Stenciled with the artist named Banksy, lower left. Spray paint stenciled on board, 48 by 48 inches, executed in 2000. The work is unique. It's okay, a so uh, it's the it, it, I want to understand a stencil would be something that has holes in it. Does it have holes in it? So we keep, so if I bought it, I could make that picture. Yeah, you could. I mean, I could make a stencil like. No, no, but it, are they selling the stencil or something this like, that came? This work that was stenciled, like not the stencil itself. Maybe they sell it somewhere. I could see where you could find Banksy stencils. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so if we were a consumer, like not a consumer, but a fine <laughs> art Banksy aficionado, where could we buy Banksy stencils? Where can we buy Banksy stencils? You know, Lainey Frick went into making stencils. You know, she's an artist, a fine artist. And oh, they sell it. It's a interesting. Yeah, no, you can. I mean, there are fine art stencils. I just don't think of Banksy when I think about it. It's, I guess, you know. So she sells them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if she does now, but I mean, a, a few years ago, I saw that she was doing that. So let's see. I'm looking like there, like there is quite a few you can buy, but this is the interesting thing. Like, okay, there's a listing on Etsy but they're like smaller ones. They're not big. They're just like copies of his work that you can buy. Okay. That's different. So probably they made those, you know, yes. whoever selling them made those uh, to um, imitate the Banksy ones. But yeah, where, then, where can we buy his official stencils? That's where 
but yeah. I don't see. Sure. I'm trying to find it. A lot of it just seems to be re like people. Okay, does Banksy sell his stencils? Let's try that. Yeah, and, or ask, where can we get an original Banksy stencil? Whatever that would mean. You know, I, it, it's... Okay, oh, oh my. Now, there's one, a Banksy rat stencil for $3,500. Uh, okay, tell me again, what is it that we're looking at? It's a, I, I mean, I can bring it up. It's a, it's a Banksy rat stencil from 2002 and it's framed and it's $3,500 if you want to buy it on first dibs. Okay. Let, let's look at it. Okay. I'm going to bring it up then. You know, Julia and I, you and I should start our own stencil service. Don't you think? I want to, I would love to make stencils, just not his stencil. Okay. Be be open-minded about it. I'm open-minded about most things, but this just is not it. Okay. He has a shovel. How cute, I guess. I don't okay. It. I mean, it looks like an ink. Uh, ink. I mean, it looks like it's created in ink, right? Yeah. It says maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it says it's an original. That's what it said when I did the search. So. That's I don't what know what that means. You know, if it's made from a stencil, how can it be an original? You you do see what I'm saying? No, it's not. A, I mean, it's not an original original, but I typed in Banksy's original stencil. It's, it's not. It's a copy off the stencil, of course, obviously. But, yeah. Yeah. So they're even misusing the word stencil because that's not a stencil. That's an image made with a stencil. Well, what we should do, like you're saying, is we should market our own stencils and people could buy them. I'm going to take us out of that because that's enough. Of okay. That so anyway, my thought is why don't we make stencils instead of like worrying about what Masterworks is doing and blah, blah, blah. Maybe we should make stencils. Maybe that's what we should be doing. Yeah. The only thing is I don't think anybody pay a million dollars for my stencils. You. <laughs> But they don't have to. People like I really have thought about like what I could sell on Etsy. People just want to buy something that they enjoy that they can use for like a crafting application on Etsy. Something like that, you know? Right. Like if you were to make a stencil, I don't know, of like Jean Lafitte or something, maybe you would find people who are interested in that. Very rare. It's a very um, obscure topic, you know? Uh-huh. And you would probably have the only stencil. That's just a thought. Or like if you were to make a stencil, I don't know, of a fox. Or okay. whatever that you want Julia, to Julia, is there a service like Print On Demand that makes stencils from our own artwork? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what we should do. Because I, I don't think I would be very good at cutting out the stencils. I'm terrible at that. <laughs> but I'd be willing to make the picture, you know, the image, and then have somebody else produce the stencil. Okay, custom stencils made to order. Like you can customize them with, let's see. But that's somebody else's image. I'm sure there's a print on demand. Let's see. Well, it seems like there's lots of custom stencils made in the USA, like looking for custom stencils, like. I'm seeing a website called stencils online and it looks like they have different things, but that's their stuff. Like, okay. How to or turn. Maybe, maybe you really need one of those. Um, what do you call those printers uh, that create things? Yeah. Um, we need one of those like 3d printers, right? Yeah, that's right. So with a 3d pr printer, we could make our own plastic stencil. That's so true. Because I'm looking a lot of this up. I'm guessing that's how people are selling stencils. They're probably, they probably own a 3D printer. Hmm. Like, would you think not? Or they're cutting them out, I guess, maybe on their own. I mean, back in 2002, I think they still cut them out. Now they, they're probably mass producing them. 
Yeah. Turn your logo into a reusable stencil. I'm seeing a lot of tutorials on it. How to make your own stencil. 3D printer to make stencils. That's a question. 3D printer to make stencils. Okay. Tattoo stencil printer. Flash. Like there's different. It looks like there's different printers you can buy that will do it for you. How to make a stencil with a 3D printer tutorial. I mean, there seems to be like the thing, ways to do it if you're interested. I see quite a few resources on it. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm not ready to invest in anything big like a, a 3D printer. So if they had print on demand programs just like uh, Amazon has, then I would be willing to try that because it wouldn't cost me much. Yeah, so I print on what I was seeing for print on demand seemed to be stencils. Um, make your own stencil, make your own stencils. Um, stencils online, but that seems like they have more of their own pre made custom stencil 3.0. Let's see. Our silk screen stencil film is designed to make re it seems like a lot of what I'm seeing um, for the stencils. I'll have to keep looking. Free printable stencils, make your own stencil. How about that? Free stencil mm -hmm. maker, thousands of free ready. Oh, see, these are ready to use. These are things that other people created. That's a lot of what's coming up on these stencil websites. Yeah. Okay. So now let's be realistic. Uh, we can do a lot of things, you and I. Yeah, we yeah. Paint, we can paint. We could, we could make stencils, but who would buy our stencils? The big problem that we have is marketing. Yes. Uh, and the, uh, the amazing thing about Banksy is he made stencils and he got all sorts of people to commit crimes with those stencils. Um, how did he get them to do that? I don't know. That's the thing of, at the end of the day, like, I guess people want to be street famous and they want, they, but in an anonymous kind of way, I mean, it's kind of like people who join anonymous and they want to be hackers. And I don't know. I like, we kind of knew that somebody in our complex like belonged to anonymous because they had the, the picture in their window. It was kind of creepy and weird, but like some people will do these things because they want the street cred, I guess. Okay. I, I, the person who has a picture of anonymous in their window is probably not, you know, anonymous. They might not be, but they might just be a fan, I guess. Yeah, they're a fan. That's a, so it still doesn't explain the people who actually do this stuff. What did they do it for? I mean, just to know that they did it, it's like a psychological high, I would think. Like, because they're not really making money off of it, and except for the Banksy group, they're somehow making money off. Of it. <laughs> they they know. are, but the yeah. copycats, they're not. They're just doing it like like all the little copycats that went into Joshua Tree, and then after like somebody defaces a rock and they do it, they're not making any money off doing that. It's just like for social cred, I think. And then they put it on their TikTok and. And yeah, but I mean, it's like asking what, why would somebody uh, become a, you know, a, a terrorist, a, a person who blows himself up, a suicide bomber? I mean, I, why would they do that? You know, I don't get it. I don't get it either, but they're just like, they're motivated by a dark side of their, I don't really understand that, that mindset. Yeah, so there's a lot that we don't understand. And until we understand it, we can't fix anything in the world, you know? We can't make anything get better. Um, this is just an art channel. I'm not trying to fix the world, but still. Oh, it's good I, that you have these philosophical thoughts about it, though. It's interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll tell you what. To, to lighten things up, I'll share my recent paintings so people Yay. won't think this is not an art stream, okay? <laughs> Goodness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I just don't have deep, high thoughts of this Banksy thing. That's just my little opinion. No, I was just trying to understand what's going on in the world. That's all. I love the flowers, though. The flowers are so pretty. Well, thank you. But uh, yours are prettier. 
Uh, so anyway, this was what I painted on the stream with you. That was fun. I like how they opened up more so you were able to get two different views. Right. So the earlier one. Um, where in the world did I paint that? I don't even know where I put it. Because Bo was messing around with my. Uh, oh, there it is. That was the earlier view when they were kind of more closed. That's cool. But I, but I don't have a lot of control over the um, colors. You know, it's not really the colors I would have chosen to paint, but it's, you know, it's what I had in watercolor. Yeah, watercolor is more limited. Like I showed you that metallic um, palette. It's all metallic and then it doesn't even have like brown. Like what I thought was brown was like a different type of copper. It was interesting. So this is what Bo painted. And, you know, if we were going to do gimmicky things, we could say, well, this is painted by a chimpanzee. So it's probably worth a lot of more money than anything that I That's paint. Maybe you should sell it, Aya. Maybe people would buy it. <laughs> People love Bo, like, I don't know. But that's not really what I want to do with art or with Bo, you know. I know. I, I, I'm not but like I, that. No, but if somebody wanted to buy it, you know. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. So here's a different art topic that we could discuss uh, if we're done with, with the whole art investment for now. And yeah. that is... You know, we talk about the master painters and they're very good and they're very detailed. But even, you know, if you think about the Mona Lisa, not the Banksy one, mm -hmm. but the real Mona Lisa. The actual Mona Lisa. Yeah, it's a very good painting. There's no doubt about it. It's beautiful art. But how do we know whether it's a good likeness of her or not? We don't. We don't know. That could just be his imagination of what she looked like. Most right. likely it was. And most of the artists, because like, remember, like, I love all those Ottoman sultanas, but all those paintings were just created by Europeans who thought what she might look like, but they didn't have a real person that they based those on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even when somebody sat for a painting, it's not always clear that what came out was a good likeness, you know? Yeah. There's a story about that, actually. Um Anna Cleves. Oh my gosh. Like, um, oh yeah. Um, basically Henry VIII was deceived into believing that she was more beautiful than she actually was. Cause she was not very attractive at all. And on top of that, she was kind of a prude. So he was really upset about it because he wanted, even though he executed Anne Boleyn, because at the end he thought, Oh my gosh, she's such a slut but he wanted somebody that was a little bit more like her. Like he was always looking for a wife that was like her, even though he was paranoid later, she didn't give him a son. And oh my God, she might've cheated on me, even though she didn't. Um, Thomas Cromwell, he lost his head because he, Henry VIII was deceived into believing that, that Anna Cleves was a beautiful woman due to a painting that was exaggerated. Very yeah. exaggerated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think... I think one of the things for me as a portrait painter is that there are two issues. One, is it a pretty painting? You know, is it a nice painting? Is it an artistic painting? And there's a totally different issue is, does it, is it a good likeness? Yeah. And, and those things sometimes conflict even for me, you know? It's a good question. It's like good to know, like, is this an actual likeness? When we look at a painting of George Washington, I would like to think that's what he looked like. But did the artist like kind of exaggerate sometimes or King Henry the Eighth or anybody really? Is that exactly what they look like? Do we know for sure? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think we do know. I mean, I imagine that many of the great uh the great painters of the past did actually uh, make create beautiful actual likenesses. Oh, uh, sure, but, yeah, definitely. I mean, Vermeer. We, we don't. Yeah, we don't know which ones though. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. I mean, that's where the whole camera obscura um, controversy came in. Because they're saying, oh, Vermeer was very accurate, but then they said, did he use the camera obscura? 
to create the accuracy that he had in some of his portraits. I don't care if he did, honestly, but that is. Yeah, but, but I mean, accuracy and detail are two different things. And unless you actually have a photograph of what the person was painting, you don't know about the accuracy. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. We can't we can't go there and say it's hard to say, you know. Yeah. So there are times when I feel my portrait is kind of accurate and other times less accurate, but prettier, you know? Yeah, I understand. Well, I think you have a lot of accuracy. I see a lot because I recognize like sword and I recognize myself and other people when you paint, like, so I think you do get the essence, like you are good at like detecting like characteristics, like maybe like certain like facial expressions. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I know I distort. I mean, I totally distort everything and yet I get those right. And then I wonder about things like, um, you know, when I try to do a flower, uh, it doesn't seem to be as accurate or as real or, you know, maybe I get the character of the flowers, but not the flowers themselves. But, you know, flowers don't really have character, do they? Not per se, but I just think flowers are beautiful to me and they speak to me. I don't know. I just really love flowers. and Yeah, but I, I don't know if so. I, I don't know if I can get on the same level that I do with portraits doing a flower. But you don't um, have to. If you want to do portraits, you should do portraits, not flowers. You see what I'm saying? I don't think that everybody has to try every single art style to achieve a care, you know, a good painting. Like, but I like the flowers. I, but if you prefer the portraits, you should stick to that. You know. So uh, this is one that wasn't based on a real person. I wasn't looking at anything. This is just out of my imagination, um, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, but I suppose if I did more still arts, I could get more depth into my uh, portraits too. I mean, if you want to work on more still, do you feel compelled to do more like still life artwork at this time in your life? Is that something you want to do? Not really. I mean, not as my my end goal. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's not it's not really my thing. But I'm trying to figure out how to make my portraits better. But you know That's what? This is a good thing about you is you are very good at creating art very fast and you enjoy it. And they always say that that's a good thing for like increasing your ability. So maybe you should just keep painting like maybe for five to 15 minutes, which I think you're really good at doing a still life. I don't know when you have time. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe I'll mix it up. I'll, I'll just because not because I think I'm now going to be painting, you know, still lives as my major thing. Oh, but no. just see if I can improve. Yeah. And I mean, I guess they say like being able to detect shapes in a still life helps with all forms of drawing and painting. I, they do say that like, yeah. Honestly, though, when I did art, though, I never like started at the beginning and I never went like from this to this. I just always drew and I painted. And when I got to be a certain age, I became a little obsessed with wanting to sketch the outline perfectly. I would like to get away from that and be able to do quick sketches and just feel good about it. I just always feel anxious about it, though, honestly. Uh, can you show me today's painting that you did oh, with yeah. a I mean, see, this is the thing. Like, this is the quickest I've ever been, though. Like this. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it's really beautiful, but I always feel... And then I did that... Um, I mean, I can show you some other things I did. Well, this one was kind of weird because it was just the... Was <laughs> really well, you did a caricature. I think that's what it was. And then I did the rose, and I thought that turned out pretty good. I that think that's is beautiful. I love yeah. it. I that's love it. my thing, I think. And then I have the other one that I finished, but I'm flattening it out. So I can show you that one, too, because I added more to it. Let's see. But then it just became more of a, it's more floral now. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, right. Like, there we go. Yeah. I love the vase. And, and the flowers, they're beautiful. 
And I like the blue uh, background. I don't actually like the table as much. Oh, that's okay. I just yeah. like the table because I thought it was kind of fun and metallic. Uh-huh. The table was in it at the beginning, actually. I know, but when I first saw it, you hadn't colored it in. And so I was really smitten with the vase and the flowers. And there was a little bit of black. I didn't know what it was. It was like um, just a little bit, you know, when I first saw it, when you were doing it. Yeah, I just like it because it's like a metallic table that it's sitting on. That was the whole thought behind it. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to, I mean, I liked it because it's just, to me, I like tables. And... No, it's not about, the, you know, it's not about not liking tables. It's um, It's about the perspective. Yeah, I really think it worked out pretty well. Like, I don't know. I really enjoy that one. Yeah, it's 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 a beautiful flower and a beautiful vase and beautiful coloring. Yeah. And the table really added depth to it because it just like I got the angle really good and pretty happy with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh well, uh, yeah, I'm not so happy with my flowers, but anyway. Yeah. Okay, I mean it's what, see, that's what I'm saying. We all have different takes on things. Like, it's yeah. what I, yeah. One of the things, I mean, I know that I'm not good at perspective. Um, so a lot of times I, I leave parts of the black background out. So as to avoid uh, making perspective errors. Um, so that's why, you know, a lot of times you just see like, um, you know, you just see the head of a person and you don't even hear where I did the grass, where there are two heads. Uh, you really don't see much of what's going on behind it. If I had made a bigger one, you know, uh, where I had more room. But part of what I'm doing is, uh, okay, so that's about composition. Mm -hmm. Um I tend to compose my uh, my paintings in such a way that my subject um, sort of totally fills them out. So, you know, not always, but even here, you notice her her head is cut off like that. Yeah. It, it's at the very edge, and he's very close to the edge. And I think that part of the reason I do that is to focus the eye on the subject. But to tell you the truth, part of the reason, and part of the reason that I haven't done the painting that I really want to do, the one about the children in the street. You know, I I showed you how I, I had everything set up for a really large painting of the children throwing rocks in the street. Mm -hmm. The thing that made me not do it is I realized I would have to get the perspective of the street right. <laughs> and I can't, not yet. I not think yet. Can. it just takes time. Like I, I actually really, really like perspective when I like work on it. I kind of uh, love it. I yeah. Love, I love perspective like to me, but if I want it to be right, it does take a few days to get it right. Uh huh. But I think yeah, so. Yeah, I, that's why I thought I would sketch it first, you know. So if I have an issue with how something is going to look and I'm trying to figure it out, then I will sketch it. Uh, but then, the, you know, that that really requires a lot of pre pre planning for a big painting like that. I mean, even when I did the betrayal, you know, the large painting with all the people in it. I planned it a lot ahead of time, um, but the perspective really wasn't quite right, you know. Yeah, uh, so I got I got compliments on that painting, and I remember one of my Chinese professor complimented me and said it was very nice, but very uh, accurate on the faces. And I said, yeah, but I didn't get the perspective right. And she said, well, I didn't say you got the perspective right. <laughs> you know, she was like she was aware that I didn't have it, but to her, it wasn't important because a lot of the earlier Chinese works don't have perspective. 
you know, they're kind of flat. Yeah. Yeah. So it, a lot of the Persian works also are like that. Yeah, they're very, yeah. I would say Ottoman, well, like even in the book, like the Ottoman artwork, their example well like here's an example of Suleiman it's very flat looking I mean I don't know if you can see it very well or not but there isn't a lot of depth to it yeah that's right that's right yeah I can see that yeah so it's not like every every culture has always valued perspective and I'm not saying that I'm for or against it I just I think that a lot of the times I uh, sidestep the whole issue of perspective by not putting myself there, you know. I actually think the Ottomans copied the Chinese style quite a bit. Just look at uh -huh. that. I mean, it just looks very like Chinese influenced. Uh huh. I just always well, see that in their art quite a bit. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of trading, wasn't there? There was. And also, they believe that they're descendants of the Orgu's people, like from Central Asia, even though like genetically they have a lot of Eastern European and Greek and Balkan and Anatolian, but they still have that cultural connection. Yeah, they have the language. Yeah, the language 100%. Mm -hmm. That's and right. if you speak Turkish, I think you can understand Turkic and you can also understand some of the Yakut language. It's interesting. That's what I was hearing. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in that. That's why I thought, you know, you and I could, we could study Turkish together. I've got to get that Turkish book. I really want to, I do want to learn how to speak Turkish. Uh -huh. Just those things on my list. You know, I really need to do it. We should. We should definitely do it. We should get somebody to teach us. I know. That's the thing. I would want somebody who could teach. That was my thought because that's why I actually wanted Kate's contact, but I don't know with COVID, it seems like he just never got back to me. So I didn't bother him. Yeah. Well, I don't think it has to do with COVID because I mean, what we're doing is very safe. You know, we're very not. Safe. Yeah. He just, I don't think he wanted to do it because I asked him and he's like, oh, with COVID, I have to be safe. It just seemed like that wasn't, but my friend told me once she goes, yeah, people could Zoom and they were using COVID as an excuse not to keep appointments and it was getting kind of flaky. It was getting kind of weird. She goes, COVID doesn't keep you from doing a Zoom appointment. And these were professional appointments and they were just flaking on her. And she's like, okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I guess we could learn Turkish on our own with just a grammar book. But if we could find somebody, a guest that teaches Turkish, that'd be great too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly where I put my Turkish book, but it was it was uh, Teach Yourself Turkish. It was something like that. Where did you purchase it? Like, uh, maybe I could get the same one. I wonder if it's still in print. Like, I don't know. This was this was about 40 years ago. I, I, I'm giving away how old I am, but. No, no, I. It's probably a good book, honestly. It's probably uh, a good book if it's still in print. Because I find a lot of the older books just taught language better, taught everything a little bit more detailed, you know? Yeah, I think it was geared to a British audience. And they said, uh, and be sure not to talk like a British woman when you're saying this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, they said that British women uh, speak too high. They, they're, they cast their voice too high. <laughs> oh, yeah. I kind of have that um, upward terminal too, where my voice. No, 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 no. It's not the rising intonation. Uh, yes. It's uh, that they just have higher pitch, like, oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, like that. It's the whole thing. It's not like at the end. No, no. The, the whole thing, maybe they want to be feminine or something. I don't know, and they so they they talk too high. Like we know that, for instance, Israeli women talk lower. So if a woman uh, is bilingual in English and Hebrew, her voice probably sounds higher when she's speaking English. That's interesting. You know what's it just bothers me is even with Americans, people are always telling me I don't speak loud enough or maybe high enough. I'm always getting complaints that people can't hear me. 
Oh, I, well, that would be loud. That would be loud, not high. <laughs> I don't want to be screaming. And it seems like everybody's screaming in public and I just really hate it. Like, I just, why can't people speak lower? That is one thing. That's one complaint. Have you noticed that? Probably well, not where you live. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't don't get out much. I don't like it when I get out. Uh, you know, this weird thing happened when I went to the grocery store. So I was, I, I had already put my credit card in and there was a, one lady was uh, at the register and another lady, a, a big lady was on the other end talking to her. They were talking to each other and I thought she was bagging my groceries. Yeah, you know? I would say that, right? Yeah, and and my cart was there. If she hadn't been there, I would have been bagging, you know, putting the bags immediately into my cart because I always do that. And by the time, but she didn't put them in the cart, but she stood there so I couldn't go bag them. And then at the last minute, she says, could you move over? Because I have to get back to my register. So I had to move over so this really big lady could get past me and she she ran into me a little bit you know she, rude. wow and, and she hadn't done anything to help and so then I had to go put all of my groceries and the card was still over there and this other lady uh, who, who was next in line came and stood by my card what? my card that's weird that's so weird. Yeah, people don't have a lot of space. I feel like sometimes I, and sometimes I, I haven't had that, but okay. I'm just looking at one thing in the store, but sometimes people decide that they have to look at that thing when I'm looking at it and they're like, can you move? And I'm like, really? You can't like, I would literally just walk by and come back if a place was busy, but yeah, people, I mean, they're just like, can you move? Like, like they can't wait one second till I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I try to avoid people because, you know, I, I didn't say anything to anyone. And the, the lady, when I went back to my card and the lady was still standing there, that was it. And she said, oh, excuse me. And I said, okay. <laughs> and, you know, because I don't want to get mad. I don't want to. So, but I try to avoid going in public, especially when there are lots of people out. Yeah, yeah. It's probably best. But I just, one thing I've noticed, I don't, I work, I go shopping. But I just noticed people are talking. Well, they've always talked really loud, but people are just really loud. And that's actually a complaint. Like um, one of the things I saw in a visiting Turkey video was they were saying, if you are in Turkey and you're in public spaces, try not to be as loud because a lot of Americans go into these public spaces or like churches or mosques and they're like screaming. Wow. But I'm like, it's kind of like getting like that in places where you were traditionally supposed to be quieter and like, like libraries, you're not supposed to be loud in a library. So I keep my yeah. place in the floor because I try to model like, you're not supposed to be loud. And then these people are just like getting louder and louder, but I'm not going to budge. Like if you're being really loud like that, it's disturbing other people. So I try to keep my voice lower, you know? Yeah, libraries were supposed to be quiet, safe spaces. Yeah. So, like, if somebody comes in and they're screaming, I'm not going to, like, make my voice higher to match what they're saying just because they think I should be talking louder. That's distracting people. And then also just in stores, I just feel like, yeah, I don't love going to, like, concerts or big events. But I just think in stores we don't need to be as loud. But I guess I'm weird. Everybody else likes to be loud and very boisterous. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I was one of those people who couldn't go to the pepper alley without putting, um, you know, cotton in my ears because I couldn't stand the noise. Yeah, and I, I never even really liked, like, I do remember, I think it was even more so when I was younger, like, I was, I actually wanted to be homeschooled, like, I wanted to finish the rest of my high school at home, and we were looking into that, but they said at the time you couldn't do it. And part of the reason was, was because two different times somebody came flying out of the audience and landed on me. I can't even explain why that happened. And then when we went to go talk to the principal about it, he acted like I was the one with the problem. And I'm like, you guys have a crowd control problem. There's people literally like jumping out of the audience to land on people. And you're not worried about it. They're like, well, it's a fun pep rally for a fun event. I'm like, that's not even a pep rally. Like people coming flying out of the audience to go do so like they can't walk down the aisle <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like a, 
it was weird. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I think neither of us like loudness. And I'm a, you know, I can't even speak up, you know, because my lungs are not good. So I can't yell. It's very I, I, yell. I try to say what I'm saying, but even then people are like, I can't hear you. Like, you can't hear me. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I think people want to get a rise out of someone. So they say they can't hear them until the person yells, you know? Yeah. And when you yell, it kind of makes you angry. You know, it does me yeah. anyway. Yeah. So it, it creates a, an emotional response, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what people want, but I just, yeah. Anyway, I know that's kind of um, gravitating away from art, but this was an interesting topic. I, I never would have thought about it if you hadn't brought it up the masterwork. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that we didn't get down to the bottom of it, but maybe I mean, we can in the future. We probably can. I guess maybe it's because I feel like I started having this aversion when Banksy came up. I was just like, uh, and there isn't quite a lot at the beginning of the searches. I think you have to dig deeper and deeper on this one. Yeah, maybe this is just another one of those NFT things. Um, yeah, it probably is. And it kind of gives me that feeling like Soylent. You know how you felt about Soylent? Like it kind of, it kind of irritated you a bit. I yeah. Think I, I think I feel the way about Banksy that you kind of felt about Soylent. So that's kind of what's what yeah. my yeah, no, I'm not a Banksy fan. Not no. at all. I, I just wanted to understand this Masterworks thing. And then I started to look and see what they were selling, you know, in case they wanted to buy some of our art. Yeah, that would be really cool. And then when I was looking at that one gallery, it's a completely different gallery where you can submit your art. It's just some gallery up in Palo Alto, California. It's not even, they just have a similar name. Oh, uh -huh. But they've been around longer than Masterworks, which was only created in 2017. So I don't know. Are they just lucky that they didn't get sued? Because I'll tell you what, some other companies would sue like for similar names and things. Well, okay. What I've, I've noticed is the bigger companies always sue the smaller companies. Yeah. Like, or a small company, they want to steal something from you. Yeah. Like I've never even heard of this cookie company company called Crumble. But I guess apparently now they're suing Crave Cookies because they said Crave Cookies in Utah is making cookies like Crumble. And it was just something that popped up on my feed. And I'm like, I don't even know who Crumble is or Crave Cookie. I don't eat that many cookies. Not anymore anyway. Um, and I never loved cookies that much to begin with. So I just I was like, oh, OK, that's interesting. <laughs> well, Sword knew all about Crumble. So. Uh, you know, I hadn't heard of it, but when we were visiting my mother in Bloomington and S.W.O.R.D. found out there was a crumble in Bloomington and there isn't one where we are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we had to visit the crumble place. <laughs> what is it exactly? Is it it's just like designer cookie or like? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I guess they change which cookies are available each time and then they have these weird recipes. Um, it, it's kind of a gimmick. It really yeah. is. And that's what, okay, that's what the TikToker lady was talking about. She's an older lady. She's like my age, like in her 40s. She said, okay, so she went to a crumble every week and she really liked crumble. So she recreated her own like copycat crumble. And I guess she got like a DM from crumble saying, oh, you better not do that. You better take down your videos. So she stopped going to crumble because it was very intimidating to her, right? Because she's like, I'm just making a video. Not most people can go to crumble. There's not that many crumbles. So she was still making cookie videos. And another company called Crave Cookies like reached out to her. And they said, oh, you can make our recipes. It promotes us. We love it. And then I guess she heard recently that crumbles suing Crave Cookies in Utah, like a smaller cookie like company, because they apparently like um like infringed upon their copyright, but it's all cookies. I didn't know cookies were copyrighted, but um. I'm sure it's not copyright. Maybe it's a trademark. Yeah, maybe it's a trademark thing, but I, that was the first I had heard about Crumble or Crave Cookies and it just popped up on my feed today. I'm like, oh, this must be really big. And then I looked at Crumble and they had a Sriracha cookie. And I was like, that's kind of weird, but maybe people like it. Yeah, well, <laughs> 
you know, another thing that's uh, very trendy right now is, now I can't remember, there's these stuffed animals. Uh, it's not squishy. It's they're like um, a plushie, right? Like those little plush, plushy, plushy. Yeah, but what are they called? I've forgotten the name of it. Uh, I saw. I think I saw one at CVS. The other yeah, day. they have they have them everywhere right now, and I sort of knows all about it. And I forgot what it's called. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. I saw one at, at Costco, like a really big one. And I said to my mom, who needs a, a, a $40 plushy thing? Like whatever it was, it was like a squishy plushy. Yeah. But I don't remember the name. It's just something else. It's called something. Squishy plushy. Squish mallows. Squish mallows. Yes, that's it. That yeah, there was a big one. Okay, when we were at Costco, it was like so big, and I'm like, "What is that thing?" And, I, and, yeah. I, and we're like, "I don't know." And then people were like squishing it. <laughs> yeah, so squishmallows are very popular. Um, when we went to Chicago, uh, there was a whole store with squishmallows, and then there was a competing store with fake squishmallows that were not <laughs> the the real thing. <laughs> I think I told you about the cabbage patch controversy when I was a kid, right? Uh, well, I know about cabbage patch dolls, but no, I, I don't know. I don't know the controversy. Okay. Well, it, it was very controversial because people were selling bootleg ones in the Toys R Us parking lot because you would go in Toys R Us and um, they'd be like almost two hundred fifty dollars. And I told my mom, I really want one. She goes, I'm not gonna buy you a two hundred fifty dollar cabbage patch doll. No way. That's what she said to me. I don't know. So anyway, we were out in the parking lot and there were people like, Cabbage Patch Dolls, $50. And my mom's like, those aren't real. Like it was people basically selling like a bootleg Cabbage Patch Doll that they made themselves. <laughs> well, that's ingenuity for you. It was, it was just funny, but people were really mad. And there was like all these people like, how dare they take Toys R Us as like, you know, competition. It, it was just funny. It, it does sound very funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. I don't understand how things like that start to trend. And that's probably why nothing that I create will ever trend, you know? Well, I mean, I would love to figure out like the trending marketing schemes too. I guess Masterworks, it sounds like, I think you're very good at picking up on what's going to be. It seems like it's going to get really big soon. I have a feeling it's going to be like the next Robin Hood thing. You know, that's my thought. Yeah. But <sighs> that's all I can say about it. I'll look more into it. And maybe if you find something, we can talk about it more later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it was nice talking to you about this. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope you do as well, Aya. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.